13 rebounds this season entering the game. No shot, that's a foul on Alex Dennis. As Pollard will go to the line, and we don't want to see him go to the stripe because if he sees the ball go through the net, he's going to heat up. When we look a little deeper into the stats here, we see that Reed only averages seven minutes per game, but he may get a little bit more playing time tonight because he seems to be affecting the Eagles play. Pollard gets it to go. And when he sees the ball go through the net, that rim starts to look like an ocean. Senior guard for the Bulldogs. Second one doesn't go in. And Henderson's pushing the pace. Oliver takes a three. It's no good. Fist come down with the rebound. And here's Singleton. And trying to do work with Pollard and Reed. And good positioning by Reed, but offensive three seconds. That's a turnover. Ooh, Will Henderson looks like he might have just gone away with a double dribble there, Kylie. I believe he did, but we'll let that be our secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, no starters in the game right now other than Alex Dennis for Asbury. And Spencer not able to get it to go. Asbury is having a tough time getting points in the paint. Good feed down low by Singleton. That's Collins with the basket. And Asbury's lead has dwindled down to two. 23-21, six and a half to play in the first half. And there's Finson taking it to Reed. And a foul on Reed. Good job by Finson to get the foul drawn on Reed. And Finson will go to the line. You see there's Svensson taking it to Reed, and if he can get into foul trouble, then Asbury will have a easier time down low today. Svensson shooting 50% from the free throw line this season, but he's only had six attempts. Now he's 4-7 on the year. And Christian Svensson, he's had big shoes of Hill, having to fill in for C.J. Penny in the starting lineup. You follow Asbury, you know C.J. Penny was a star player last year, and he graduated, and Svensson is taking on the role and might say he's done it pretty well. And Singleton's getting a lot of playing time for the Bulldogs. And there's Pollard on that quick trigger. High arcing shot, no good. And Dennis gets away with the rebound. And it's been a quick paced game, and here's Dennis on the other end for the three. No good, and Peters comes away with an offensive board. And Thompson is the game, misses his three-point attempt. Oh, and try to alley-oop it to Chris Pollard, but unable to get it to go, but he still gets the layup. Not as fancy, but still effective. And all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, we have a two-point ball game. Now, Asbury has not been shooting well from the field today. They're going to Thompson down low. And good defense by Singleton, able to strip the ball away. And there's Collins with an easy layup. And this game is all tied up, 25 all. And the difference here again, you see the Bulldogs are advancing the ball immediately when they get game possession of it. Asbury shooting 35% from the field and Fisk is shooting a very good 40%. As oh, Reed absolutely rejects Thompson. What a great block by Reed and able to turn it into two points on the other end. And Fisk has their first lead of the game as Asbury trails. 27 to 25. Asbury was the favorite coming in to today's game after beating Fisk earlier this year. As the knife drives to the basket by Dennis, ties the game back up, and Kylie, if Fisk was able to come away with the victory, it'd be somewhat of an upset. Yes, although Fisk is a division above Asbury. However, Asbury had the upper hand earlier in the season, and our I would believe the favorite to win this ball game. All right, well, we have a 27-27 game here with four and a half left to play in the first half. Come back for more action. We'll see you after the break. Down the first round. 
And this experienced team, they're looking to get back. Do you think that they can get a, a tournament win this year? I think that they'll be able to make it back to the tournament, just given the leadership and the, I mean, they're all very experienced players and they all have such, I mean, you look at Kylie and Katie and they all have four years under the belt and, and the promising town of Brittany and the inside presence of Khalid. I mean, they just have a really solid team. There are a lot of really good teams out there and uh, it'll be hard for them to win the tournament, but that's, I mean, who's to say they can? McDowell comes away with the foul. And Kylie Gorby brings the ball up the court. You see Miami Middletown uh, calling it quits on the full court press. Well, if it's not working, don't need to do it. Kalee Whiteside is doing a little bit too much work down low. She gets called for the hook. That's Whiteside's first foul. A little bit of an unnecessary foul there, Griffin. Yeah, she really just seemed to be backing into the opponent, trying to hold her back. Obviously can't do that. She already had good position, but trying to do a little too much. Good defense here as Middletown tries to penetrate in the paint. And yeah, Gorby had good defense there. But Tiana McDowell did a great job finding some space and capitalizing. Oh, nice find by Gorby to Katie Fletcher, who puts him a shot no good, but gets a foul call. Good feed from Gorby. Yes. See Katie try to convert both free throw attempts here. She steps up to the line. Coach Price looks pretty relaxed over there on the bench, doesn't he? How could you not be at this point in the game? Fletcher knocks down the first free throw. Adding to her point total. Katie Fletcher knocks down both her free throws. It's been a great game for Katie Fletcher so far. Yes, it has. She has been excelling on every aspect of the game. And here's Tedwell. She's not able to do anything against the size, but she's going to have to create some opportunities for her teammates if they want to try to cut into this lead a little bit. Ooh, and a great block by Kalee. Great all-around defense. Here's Gorby with a pull-up jumper. Bounces around, no good. Fletcher comes away with the rebound, but she's going to be called for a travel. She was trying to call a timeout there. She was uh, falling out of bounds, but unable to do so. Got to love the effort from Katie. Yeah. Yeah, Coach Price is laughing at her over there as she took a tumble out of bounds. Looks like she was trying to dive into the swimming pool there, Griffin. Yeah. Wouldn't be a very good dive either. Ooh, and that's, I think, the first offensive rebound for him in this game. Yeah, here's Victoria Floyd back into the game, along with A.J. Lewis, who pushes the tempo. And here's Floyd with a nice little jumper, but no good. And ball squirts away, Mackenzie Glenn. Nice around jumper, but she's not able to get a go. And Asbury will really push the tempo a lot here. You want to see him slow it down, kind of control the clock a little more. And Gorby resets the offense. Savannah Taylor takes a three-pointer. That's no good. She tried to bank it off the glass. They are still fit. They are 50% from the three-point line now in this game. Speaking of threes, here's one from Middletown. No good. And Savannah Taylor looks to push the tempo here. We've got the smaller defender on her. And Tidwell and Taylor is able to draw the foul. On the 23 Summer Cup. That's the name that you love to say. You're just going to find any way to say that name. That is you? absolutely right. I, I defy anybody to say that name without smiling. <laughs> Here's Taylor to the charity stripe. And she makes her first. Is Cassidy Flynn checks in for Kylie Gorby. Taylor's only shooting 68% on the season. Savannah Taylor's a good young player. A lot of the, these players are seniors, and Savannah Taylor's going to stick around with us for one more year. Yeah, and she was injured, I believe.
Hopefully Tyler can get the points going. Get another double-double. Offensive rebound goes out to Hayden. And here's Grubel. He's a good shooter. He hasn't done well tonight. But Smith comes out with another rebound. And it's a three-on-two break for the Eagles. Let's see what they can do. Smith goes up, puts up a shot, and it goes in! Tyler Smith with a fantastic coast-to-coast -coast off the offensive rebound and contorted his body and somehow got that ball to go down. We saw the whole Asbury bench hop up there. That definitely got some energy going here in the gym. I see Tyler, he put that up. He just kind of threw it up there with his right hand and you see the IE Northwest player questioning that call. And there's a jump ball. I believe he called the foul on number 20, Alex Dennis, which was a definitely a debatable call. And here's that replay of Tyler Smith. He was determined all the way. He got three Red Hawk defenders around him and just kind of tossed it up there and it went in. Down low pass, puts it up, rolls around. Good shot for Mosser. Slowly cutting away at the lead. It's 55-40. Asbury, that's six points for Mosser on the night, and Kyle Lamb puts up a shot, no good. I'm sure Coach Schaus would uh, like for Kyle to take a better shot. And a steal by Jordan Gilbert. Here comes Kyle pushing up the court. Finds Dennis who throws it up there, no foul call. Probably a good no foul by the refs. And Grubel, he's a good shooter. Let's see if he can get it going. In and out. Smith with another rebound. The Eagles need to sit down here and get him a good look at the basket. We have three straight possessions with just two crazy shots and then a poor turnover. Tyler Smith made a try to be a little bit too fancy with the pass. We see Gilbert, the point guard here, getting very vocal. I've heard coach head, head coach Will Schaus refer to him as the floor general. So good to see him trying to get his team together. And we'll see what um, the Eagles have next possession. It started off early. A lot of turnovers for IU Northwest. But recently, Asbury has about three or four turnovers this half, and this helped IU Northwest get back into it. Northwest working the ball inside this half. And you know why? That's because Trenton Thompson's not in the game. I'm sure we'll see him here soon. Had too good of a first half to not see the court during this half. And here's Spencer for the three. No good. And rebound goes to Hunt. And they're playing a nice slow game right now. They're very patient. Even though they're down by 13, they've got plenty of time and they know it. There's Grubel again from the same spot. No good. Just can't get that shot going. Spencer comes down with it. And Gilbert heads it over to Lamb to reset up the offense. Spinson takes another three. Good. <laughs> nice shot by Spinson at the top of the key. Extends the lead to 16. Spinson hasn't shot many threes on the season. Only seven attempts, but shooting 57%. And there's a travel on Pennington. That's another turnover. 13th of the game for Iowa West. There's Spencer with a hand in his face. Nice stroke, just puts it up and in. You know, we see Trenton Thompson coming back out on the court. So interesting to see what the Eagles will do now. Definitely need to try to get him some touches after a strong first half. And Jordan Gilbert was pressured all the way up to the court by Hunt. And I guarantee you that they're gonna try to draw something for Thompson down there. They go to him but loses the ball. Good defense by Alex Dennis as they're able to come away with the steal. He knocked the ball away and Lamb came up with it. And here's Thompson again. What's he gonna do now? Hook shot, no good. And here comes Ellis, puts it up, and nice lay-in. Peters just a little too late getting back on the defensive end. And the Red Hawks have cut it once again down to 14. Just can't seem to get over the hump though. Going back to Thompson. He's been the go-to guy so far this game. Gilbert shoots a three.
earlier this uh, in the game. They're settling. And there's Roach. Not a good shot, but Nagel comes with the offensive rebound. And good hustle out of bounds for Grace Roach. Not able to come up with it, but Coach Shelton's got to love the hustle from his sophomore guard. Okay, see here, she's going after the ball. That's something we didn't see in the first half, Sam. They, they've been much more aggressive here in the second half. Asbury's got to get it back in the hands of Warren. She's been great all game. She's been pushing the tempo, but she hasn't been able to yet. Victoria Flew with a nice little 10-footer. Able to get inside and hit the mid-range jumper. That's a big shot. Push the lead to six. And they got a post up. Victoria Floyd's doing some great defensive work down the post. Yeah, her and Nagel are really fighting down there for position. And Monahan's left wide open for the three-point shot. Looks like Warren just uh, trailed away from her, and Monahan got that shot up. She's starting to turn it on, and it's a three-point game. All the momentum going toward IU Northwest right now. You can't lose it, son. This second half has been all IU Northwest. Asbury's still been able to get some points on the board. But you see plays like that. Oh, and that's a that's a buzz kill for the Red Hawks. Coach Shelton went all the way to the end of the court. He was upset with that call. I agree with him. And the ball got tipped up in the air, and the both girls were fighting for the ball. I don't agree with that with that call, but you gotta go with the whistle. Savannah Taylor gets the ball knocked away from her. Oh, and uh, that ball is going to this end of the court. IU Northwest ball yes. with a chance to tie the game. Said it went off Savannah's legs, so we got to get uh, get a defensive stop here. And there's Monahan. Let's see if she can work her magic. Yeah, she drives to the lane, and they're going to call a push off on her. Monahan just trying to do too much there. Put her shoulder and just drove Taylor out of the way. Simple offensive foul, good call by the ref. Coach Shelton's got to like the aggressiveness. And here comes Grace Roach back into the game. She's had a very good second half. One of the main reasons why Asbury's lead's been cut away at. And a jump ball, and stay with Asbury. Good defense by the Red Hawks. Coach Shelton's got to like the effort that it seems putting in this half. Yeah, good. Uh, a little bit out of position was Rubino, but able to tie her up. And it goes to Savannah Taylor off the inbounds, and Floyd puts up a shot. Oh, good. Victoria Floyd getting some contribution off the bench. That's yeah, two straight mid-range jumpers that she's hit here in the fourth quarter. And Monahan not able to answer back, and Floyd with the rebound. Floyd took a bad shot earlier this quarter, but ever since then, she's been great. And there's Brittany Warren carving that defense again. And she is just so fast and attacking and switching directions. Great drive by Warren. We're going to have to start calling her the snake because she just slithers in and out of every which way. I like that sound. And uh, the newly nicknamed snake. Brittany Warren picks up the foul. As you see her driving through the defense to get another nice, easy, high percentage layup. Now you Northwest cut it to three, but now they're back down by seven. And there's Monahan again. They're gonna try to get into her hands. They're trying to work it inside. On Grushowski. Grushowski gets an easy basket underneath. And Kaleem Whiteside has not been able to, she's been in front of the post all game, but she has not been able to stay between her woman and the basket. And it's been proven costly the second half, not so much in the first half, but now it has. Katie Fletcher puts up a shot that goes off the glass and out of bounds to IU Northwest. Yeah, they got a little out of control there, did Fletcher. You see the basket by IU Northwest. Uh, something that worked earlier in the first half was and being able to uh, front the post hasn't worked out here in the second half. And now you see Whiteside, she's playing in between, ran the basket now. 
Maybe she learned her lesson. There's Roach. She's been getting good shots all game, but not good there. And Gestrowski battles for the rebound and a block by Whiteside.